Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by my guy Nate Weitzer, still out there in New Orleans. And we've got an 11-game slate on Friday to end your work week here in the NBA. Got a couple game videos and our player props, so make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Continue to follow along with us. Also want you to head to thelines.com. Check everything out. We've got uh, written content there for you guys in the NBA and everything else alike. Also have our odds finder tool on there. You can use that to make sure you're seeing what all the sports books are offering in terms of those odds in the NBA this season. Nate, let's go ahead and jump into this slate and then talk about our game here that we are going to enjoy watching. At least I am the Knicks at the rap show. Our Knicks, huh? Um, Yeah, yeah, the Bulls plus four and a half at Sixers probably would be a little bit bigger where Joel Embiid playing, but he's not. Uh, Blazers plus one and a half at Pacers, pretty high, 237 total there. Nets, the other game we talk about, are minus four at the Pelicans. We'll be without Zion again. There, um, this game, the Knicks are plus three and a half at the Raptors. The total has been bet down to 218. Hornets plus 10 at Bucks. Wizards plus two at the Thunder. Pistons plus two at the Spurs. Cavs are plus six at the Nuggets. Donnie Mitchell is probably going to sit there. Clippers plus three and a half at Wolves. Clips on a back-to-back. Got to stay on top of those injury news. Um, Miami's minus two at Phoenix. And then the Hawks minus two and a half at the Lakers, who, you know, beat them in Atlanta and have won three straight, including one without LeBron. So why not take the Lake show there at home? Uh, I mean, there are plenty of reasons why not, but it's just, <laughs> we don't have much faith in Atlanta either, uh, nope. especially on the road. So that's a little bonus pick for you. The Knicks also seems like wrong team favorite here. I mean, I know they lost to Toronto uh, two weeks ago at home, but like we said, um, you know, plenty of times you see a, a team bounce back f- with that revenge narrative. And look, it was kind of an anomaly. The Knicks were on that heater and, and then Pascal Siakam just has a career high, what, 54 uh, for it to both go over for, you know, unexpectedly and for the Raptors to win. Um, and right now the Raptors don't look like they're going over against anybody, um, you know, fresh off a of 13 to 12 first quarter. Uh, an overtime game in which they had an 89 offensive rating against the Bucks, and it still did not go anywhere near over, finished with a 205 total. So I understand why it's been bet down four points. Um, if you are on board with that, though, you you're, you should be taking the Knicks as well because they're, they're not going to lose another low-scoring game with this Raptors team, we don't think. You say they're 11-0 when they allow 105 or less. I believe they're 17-0 when they allow 107 or less. So wherever you slice it, yeah, if it's a low scoring game, they're comfortable uh, for sure. Um, and this time they're playing the Raptors without RJ Barrett, who I, I don't want to disparage too much. I'm just not really a fan of his game, his shot selection. Thibodeau is not really a fan of his defense at times, and it appears he's get Tibbs is getting much better effort without him um, because in four games their defensive rating is six and a half points better for 100 possessions without RJ. Uh, they are playing at a slower pace. It gives you a better shot at the under there, it seems. Um, but they're hitting more threes. They're getting to the line more often. And Julius Randle's kind of been unleashed, averaging 32, 13, and 5.5 and with 12 free throw attempts in those four games. With, with RJ, he's averaging 23 points and 6.5 and free throw attempts. And he did have a nice game against the Raptors last time out, 30-13 on a 76% field goal shooting. Um, and, and Brunson back now. I mean, the Knicks are are really balanced. They're, they're just looking very much in control of their system. And the Raptors, I mean, the bottom falls out of their offense all the time. They, I mean, they basically had the worst half-court offense. This is a good transition defense that they're facing. So they're going to have to try to score in the half-court. And if Siakam doesn't have it cooking like that again, where are they going to turn? I mean, Fred Van Fleet continues to struggle with his shot. He's, he's shooting 31% from three in his last seven. Um, and, you know, the Knicks are just giving up nothing in the paint. So you're going to have to hit some outside shots right now uh, against this Knicks team. And then that's the biggest difference, um, you know, between this time and, and the last time that they played. Uh 
they were the Knicks were on a heater. It was a little bit of a, 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 a not trap, but maybe let down almost. And and yes, yeah, Siakam got to the line eighteen times, and that's the biggest difference for for me in the last few weeks that the Knicks have been playing really in the month of December. Uh, and when they when they you know lost that game to the, uh, the the Raptors as sort of the anomaly in that month. What on on the um, well, and they were at home in that one where they've also been better uh, on the road, by the way. But in that game, sort of the anomaly or not the anomaly, but the the thing that changed for for the Knicks to to feel better about them in this one is they're not giving up 18 free throws to one player anymore uh they've they've gone from like 22nd in the league in the in terms of the uh the free throw rate that they're allowing their their opponents to shoot at uh right so just the amount of times purpose like amount of possessions that they're getting at the that are ending in a free throw for for the raptors right like that at the time the knicks were awful at limiting that way better now all the way up to eighth best over the course of the last few weeks in december um so i think that's a huge part of it the the, the free three Free throw disparity was 20 made free throws for the uh, the Raptors, who uh, shot 22, uh, and 11 of 18 for the Knicks, uh, which is actually the amount that they lost by, which was seven points. Funny how that ends up happening. Um, and and you know, like I said, the way that they were playing at home, and still to this day, like in, really in the month of December, they were just a way better road team um, as they went five and two straight up, six and one against the spread. They had the best defensive rating for, for the month and the second best offensive rating uh, for any road team after those Nets that I mentioned in the other video, who are like the best team ever on the road on offense right now um they have been playing at the fourth slowest pace have the knicks so you know uh, plenty of unders in that time frame as well but they've also had these low totals come at them uh as they've been increasing their defense you know all the way down to like 218 it's actually pretty common for them right now uh the thing that does worry me about the knicks which actually does feed the the sort of fuel for it for an under here is they're scoring like most of their points with un- unass- unass- unassisted field goals. Uh, and it, all you have to do is watch like the second half for, for the Knicks. And it's clear that it's your turn, my turn with Jalen uh, and, and, and um, Julius. The thing is that you're really making me realize that works when RJ Barrett is in there clogging things up. And it's becoming more and more obvious that like if Jalen Brunson and Julius Randall unlock something in each other, RJ Barrett's just in the way like we don't need another lefty who's mediocre from three and just puts his head down and drives to the basket we already have one of those and he's way better than you and taller so like do we re-sign Julius at this point knowing that the way that if we've if we've got Jalen if the Knicks have Jalen Brunson (laughs) in-house the way that they do uh and it's clear that he makes Julius better and Julius makes him better when they have spacing without RJ in the way then like what you know I don't that's a, a conversation for a different time but that's why I like this game so much they don't need to play necessarily any kind of bully ball they don't need to take advantage of matchups uh where you know you don't trust the centers playing on Toronto they don't need to play like that at all right now they just they know that the, the Raptors are not able to make threes um and that the way that they need to score is by being you know getting turnovers getting out in transition and playing sloppily like that mucking the game up and getting all those hustle points right especially with the way Fred Van Fee has Fleet has been playing uh, on his 31% uh, from three over the last seven that he's actually been able to make the games in because he's missed a few in that time frame as well. Um, you know, all, all that stuff goes, you don't have any three pointers to make. And I don't think you can, as long as Pascal's not getting to the free throw line 18 times and having another, you know, career performance of 52 points, like your offense is going to be a lot harder to come by against this team if they're not giving you easy baskets. And their offense is working with RJ not in there right now. Yeah, I mean, credit guys like Quickly and, and Grimes who are stepping up in his absence. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, when you talk, when you're bemoaning RJ Barrett's redundancy on this roster, you just again have to talk about how they extended him instead of what if they had Donovan Mitchell in his place right now? Uh, truly would be a contender. But for now, I mean, Quickly is, is looking like a great young guard. And, and in their last five, the Knicks limiting turnovers. Um, it has a lot to do with their spacing around around Jalen and Julius, and I think that that's something we'll see continue. And if you can limit turnovers against the Raptors and set your defense with Tibbs, obviously drawing up some good stuff to contain that that limited Raptor, Raptors offense, really like the Knicks here. I think you just take the money line. It's like plus 140 right now. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought up quickly and Grimes because that's the last point there too is like 
they are the types of guards that you need spacing uh, and wings that you need spacing with Julius uh, and Jalen allowing. And and you see it quickly, um, you know, numbers increase his efficiency because he's gotten to play more with the starters. And it's not just him on an island with nobody else on offense to score on that second unit with him. Uh, he's got a, a lot more help around him when he's on the court these days. And and, and so that's definitely leading, uh, contributing to the way that he's played as well. And, and the way that the offense looks in general with more speed, more youth, uh, and, and a bit more shooting as well. So that's all the time we have for you today. Make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Continue to follow along with us. Got a couple other videos up for you today, including our player props. So until we see you next, happy betting. <laughs>